making a quick video about an amazing new study on the Canaanites that was published today. Uh, it's I'm still going over it, and there's a lot to take in. And uh, but I think this is a incredibly important study uh, that was released today, and I'm going to link to link to that study, and I'm just going to go over a few quick points, a um, few key points that really jumped out at me uh, when I looked over this study, and it's titled The Genomic History of the Bronze Age Southern Levant. And first of all, the most striking thing about the findings uh, was is the uh, a Zagros Mountains Caucasus component to Canaanite populations of the Southern Levant during the Bronze Age. And that is uh, really interesting. That's, uh, and that uh, it's also reflected in uh, modern um, Levantine populations as well, which I'm going to get into. So that... Uh, Yeah, and those migrations from the Zagros and or Caucasus to the Levant occurred between 2500 to 1000 BCE. And people related to these individuals contributed to all present day Levantine populations. So, yeah, the component from populations related to Chocolithic Zagros and early Bronze Age Caucasus, introduced by gene flow lasting at least until the late Bronze Age and affecting modern Levantine population architecture. And... So then I'm just going to scroll, and there was, then uh, that's sort of the other uh, key point here that I wanted to uh, emphasize is that they compared the admixture results for these um, Canaanite populations, these Canaanite DNA samples, and there is a genetic continuity between the Canaanites and modern Near Eastern populations, including Ashkenazi Jews. Um, and I'm going to show you that figure here. So um, this is using a, a Lin Admix and a PHCP. And, and let me scroll, scroll in here. So... Um, so basically, uh, well, the other key point is that the results show that since the Bronze Age, an additional East African-related component was added to the region, on average 10.6%, excluding Ethiopian Jews who harbor 80% East African component, as well as a European-related component, on average 8.7%, excluding Ashkenazi Jews who harbor a 41% European related component. And so I'm going to show you um, this table here with uh, basically the mixture is the Megiddo uh, middle to late Bronze Age plus Iran Chocolithic is blue. And then Somali, which represents the East African, is green. And then Europe, um, LNBA, is brown. So blue is basically, uh, you know, Canaanite, Levant, um, the Middle Eastern. Somali is East African. And Europe is brown. So let's take a look. And this is with Lynn Admix. Um, so as you can see, there's Ashkenazi Jew. There's the 41% Europe. And you can see the sizable um, Levant Middle Eastern um, component to Ashkenazi Jews. And there's Bedouin, Bedouin A, Bedouin B, Druze. Egyptian, English, obviously you can see mostly Europe, Iranian, Iranian Jew, Ethiopian Jew, there you can see the 80% East African component with the, the minor Levant component to Ethiopian Jew, um, Jordanian, 
Lebanese, Moroccan, Moroccan Jew, Palestinian, Saudi, Syrian, and Tuscan. Tuscan, uh, a little more, uh, you know, Levant, um, and a little less European compared to English. And let's take a look at the results of the PHCP. So you can see very similar. There's Ashkenazi Jew. There's Bedouin A, Bedouin B, Druze, Egyptian, English, Iranian, Iranian Jew, Ethiopian Jew, Jordanian, Lebanese, Moroccan, Moroccan Jew, Palestinian, Saudi, Syrian, and oh, I think I forgot to mention Syrian before. Um, Syrian and Tuscan. So anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm going to leave a link I, to this study. I really recommend uh, spending some time going over it. Uh, really interesting. Thanks so much.